And now it's time for Porsche Painter Dixon Carrera Cup Australia. This is the beginning of round five. They've had round four put away. That's your Pro-Am winner from yesterday, Sam Shahin. David Wall picked up the round win in the Mobile Pro class. Now we get to do it all again. We throw the same amount of points up there, 180 points and 90 points for race win. The first being right now, and then the curtain raiser to the great race tomorrow. Love this category here at Mount Panorama, and a slightly jumbled grid to what we saw yesterday, Richard Crow. It's always fast, it's always furious. Chad Nalon, good afternoon to you. What a stunning afternoon this is. Picture perfect conditions for a 15 lap Porsche Painted X and Carrera Cup Australia race. Uh, this is a round of the Endurance Cup, so there are points on the line as well for a championship within the championship in the Carrera Cup standings. It's a good grid. It was de derived off the second fastest lap time in qualifying. It means Harry Jones scores his second takeaway pole award of the season. His first was at the Bend earlier this year. David Wall next. Cameron Hill, 112 points up in the championship. His third, Cooper Murray fourth. Max Fido goes from fifth in a rebuilt car. Then David Russell. Sam Shahin on pole from Morris Finance Pro-Am. Seventh on the grid. What an incredible performance that is. That is his highest ever qualifying performance in a Carrera Cup round. <laughs> it's very impressive. He's going to be busy in this one because they're uh, going to be coming from every single angle over these 15 laps. Check out some of the names we've got back here. We've got Madeline Stewart. It's her first ever weekend running in Carrera Cup. So welcome. She's stepping up from the feeder category, being Michelin Spring Cup. And then we've also got starting off the back row, down right down the very back, two drivers who are going to be running in the great race. So we've got Craig Lowndes out of 22nd, Dale Wood out of 23rd. Something of a reverse grid race in many ways. There's going to be a lot of passing going on. Plenty of passing and worth mentioning Christian Pancioni there on his first visit to Mount Panorama in the VCM performance car out of McElroy Racing goes off 21st. There is Craig Lowndes. Great form in Carrera Cup. Uh, hasn't quite delivered the kind of results he'd like due to various circumstances is outside of his control. Having said that, sixth in round four, which was races one and two this weekend, is his best ever round result in his brief Carrera Cup career. And uh, he and Wall Racing with David Wall have got support from Painter Dixon, Monochrome on those cars this weekend as well, which is great. They're putting the pieces of the puzzle together to get on the grid and have a full championship tilt across an eight-round championship next year, which would be really cool to see. Wall Racing's a great little race team. They continue to punch above their weight. And there's David Wall having won round four on the front row again for this one. That was their first round win here at Mount Panorama. They've claimed three pole awards here. Never that round win, so they've broken that streak from Sonic. And they had won the last three here. Sonic and McElroy share the most wins here, five apiece. We've had some famous winners over the years. Jim Richards included the very first round winner here back in 2003. So many drivers that will feature at the Great Race Come Sunday have come via this platform. A great stepping stone for Craig Lowndes, one of the few drivers in this field, using it as a way to stay sharp for his co-driver. They're just ushering the last few horses into the gate. Stephen Richards, Warren Luff, a couple of drivers in recent Green memory Green that have Green translated Carrera Cup success into a great race podium the day after. Bring the noise with the Porsches. Carrera Cup at Mount Panorama always puts on a show. Harry Jones on the pole. Can he get that car moving? Can he beat David Wall to the first corner? Look at Aaron Love in the orange car. Straight to the inside. That's going to be tied down there. Harry Jones has ticked the first box. That was a sweet start. The pressure on his young shoulders would have been huge. And he is leading a motor race at the mountain for the first time. What a moment for him. Yet to win a Carrera Cup round or race. Battle for second and third. And fourth position there, that's Cameron Hill. Well in front in the championship. Needs to play a thinking driver's game in this race. Make sure he collects championship points. Cooper Murray out-wrestles the championship leader into turn two. Sailing around the outside is Max Fido for Techworks Motorsport. Goes around the outside and loses a spot. In fact, Aaron Love tried to get past as well. Couldn't get there. But David Russell in the Daco car from Largo Racing grabs the spot. He's jumped up to fifth. Nice job. He'll be starting with Brody Kostecki come Sunday. Driving at Erebus across the top. Look at this for a sight. One Mike Racing at its best. From Stuttgart to Bathurst, here come the Porsches. And we're going on board with one of the absolute mountain legends, Craig Lowndes, trying to move through these Pro-Am drivers. Needs to be patient across the shelf. Dale Wood, 16th from the back of the field. Craig Lowndes, 19th already in a 23-car field. So they're making ground. Lots of laps, 15 of them to make up ground in this race. Dale Wood went 26th to 13th in seven laps earlier on in the weekend in round four of the championship. Two of those laps were under safety cars, so he uh, cut through the field like a 
hot knife through butter, a hot Porsche through a Porsche pack was uh, some really good driving. He'll be looking for damage limitation here. Battle on now, Cooper Murray in the toe of David Wall, round winner yesterday. An extra helping of some Porsche horsepower on the run to the kink at the chase. So much has gone on there this weekend. Oh, Vidal, watch out for Vidal, here he comes. He's not gonna be able to stop this car. There was a hip and shoulder with Aaron Love and he somehow hits the gap. Oh my goodness me, it started at the kink. It finishes in the gravel, and somehow they all play on around him. That was oh so close. What is going on at that bit of road today? So close to sweeping across into one of the key contenders in this race. They're all off the road. Dar Woods off, Dean Cook's off. Someone else in front of that as well didn't catch the car, but there were three off the road. Shahin blocking hard from Jeff Emery, and now the safety car comes out to calm everything down. Wee. That was absolutely on relatively smooth start until we got to the chase and from that point it just ignited oh. and Dale Wood has further problems. That car not making it back to the pits. How about Max Vidal's week? Barely scooping any points out of the round four appearance and out of the car now down at the chase. That was the hip and shoulder oh. here and Aaron Love it put him on the grass and there was no chance of stopping him. And this moment extraordinary can only imagine what was going through the mind of the young West Aussie in that bright orange car as the blue Porsche swept across in front in a plume of dust. And I think everyone else, just with the dust storm down there, bailed out, took evasive action, not knowing what was through the smoke. Days of thunder moment. What this must have been like for Aaron Love, because oh. he knows he's out there somewhere and then just sweeps across the front of him. Still travelling at a huge amount of speed. They're arriving at that kink where the contact was made at about 280 kilometres per hour. And then by the time that car has slid down the grass, it hasn't washed that much speed off. So it could still be easily doing just maybe under 200 clicks as it comes flying across the field. To quote a famous bit of commentary from 2007, how's your heart rate? It's that a moment. A, yeah, Mark Winterbottom. All the steering lock going into the 28 car from Techworks Motorsport. Had a gear selection issue in this car early in the weekend and then brushed the fence and ended up parked at the exit of turn two in the second race of round four yesterday afternoon. So it's been a, a pacey weekend for the young South Australian who's linked up with this team for the first time this weekend, but it hasn't gone to plan. So Cook was off. Tim Miles was the other car that ducked out of shot before I'd said. I was still looking through my fingers as they were all trying to sort themselves out, trying not to see what was going on. How's the dust off? Zero visibility. Now, Porsches did run around back in the old rally championship days. They won the Dakar. <laughs> not Porsche 959 won the Dakar. Uh, not like this, though. Not quite. Max Vidal out of the car. He is a dirt racer himself, by the way. Runs in sprint car racing, but now sadly out of this one. And no points for him. No points for Dale Wood. Harry Jones, though, he's the leader. Wood and Mount Panorama in Porsches at least just seem to be so unlucky this is a repeat case for him it all started really with that second qualifying lap putting him down the back yeah. and then once he start down there anything can happen. You, you could even make an argument for the first race of the weekend where he started last, got to 13th had that race gone its full 11 lap scheduled duration he could have got to the top 10 and that then changes your scenario for the next race because you're not caught up in the middle of the pack with everybody else squabbling over position. So, yeah, it's the snowball effect, isn't it? That it just keeps getting bigger and bigger when you're down the back of the field. There's Aaron Love. Once again, young West Aussie in the thick of the action. And don't forget, tomorrow morning, we kick it all off, 8.15 a.m. It's the biggest day of the year, Chad, and the best one as well. Biggest day of the year, bar none, but it's going to be extra big tomorrow because not only have we got the Repco Supercars Championship finale, the Bathurst 1000, but there's also plenty more going on across the day on Fox Sports. So that's Fox Sports 503. Lock it on to the Bathurst channel and you're going to be able to catch every single lap. And then if you're really up for it, you can stay into the night and watch the first ever Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, second last championship race for the year. That amazing battle between Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton looks set to go all the way to the wire. You just got to do a little channel flick for that one and go up to 5.05. And if you're looking for something to do in between, we've got you covered. Big Bash, the Sydney Derby. Who have you got, the Sixers and the Stars? It's always a great uh, contest, isn't it? Well, it's Sydney v Melbourne, yep. this. 
Uh, terrific contest. It's going to be good. Stars, the nearly team in Big Bash cricket. Yes. Yet team to Green, win. looking for a little bit more luck. Your boys, the uh, strikers. Rashid Khan back in yep. blue, which is excellent. Looking forward to getting down to the Adelaide Oval over the course of summer. And if I'm not there, I'll be watching it on Fox Cricket. Here we go again. It was absolutely on. Cooper Murray was so desperate to try and make that move happen further ahead. And then these two. It's such a hard thing to call that because they're absolutely side by side. And the drivers have been talking all weekend about the side draft being really effective in these cars. What happens when you get alongside the extra car, the air pressure changes, and it gives you an extra little bit of straight line performance. And you can see that because Aaron Love's car just drew up alongside Vado so quickly. But it's 270 k's an hour in one of these cars through the kick. They're absolutely pinned flat to the floor with the throttle. They do not lift. There's proof. Craig Lowndes going through there flat out and then driving into Operation Desert Storm. Because what's going on oh. in front? It's crazy. You know what even Craig Lowndes runs off the road? <laughs> that it was pretty, it's pretty gnarly down there. Yeah. I'm reminded of the hairpin at Darwin when Jordan Love had the yes. exact scenario, but wasn't as lucky as his brother was then. Yeah, ended up with broken bones. Remarkably still won that championship. Now, that car's made it back to the pits, which is interesting because it got out. Yeah. I was surprised to see him get out of that car because of the... There was no damage. It's yeah. torn the front splitter off. You can see that bouncing down the road. But outside of that, it was just buried in the sand. It might have just been a reactionary move that the car stopped. It's all silent. You pop the belts and jump out. It's an automatic thing to do. Yeah, what it has meant is that he's lost the lead lap. Now, whether or not had he stayed in the car, he would have stayed on the lead lap. Who knows? But unfortunately for Max, that was a feral slide from the kink all the way to the gravel trap. Once more from Dean Cook's point of view. So this will be interesting. He was one of the cars that took evasive action. And there's just zero visibility. And it's not particularly breezy at the moment either. So the dust sort of hung in the air and didn't move around. And he just elected to bail out. BP Ultimate Safety Car Conditions at Mount Panorama after a uh, opening lap spill down at the chase. That could have been so much worse. The good news is... We are not too far away, hopefully, from getting back to green flag conditions. Charlie, that was a pretty crazy moment. It certainly was for Max. You've had a tough weekend. Tell us what happened out there. Um, yeah, so obviously Aaron got a bit of a toe down the straight and just straight up fed me. I left him heaps of room. He's done it to me when I was a teammate and he's done it to me when I wasn't his teammate. So not really surprised, but we'll get back out there. All right, you're getting back out there, so good luck now. Thanks, Max. There we go. Well, you can tell he's a speedway boy. Yeah. Fed me a wheel. That is that is absolutely a speedway term. Yeah, if you're unfamiliar with the career of young Max, graduate of Australian Formula Ford racing, very successful in that category. But in recent years, has spent a lot of his time racing the dirt tracks of South Australia in a 700 horsepower sprint car, very successfully. This is the moment he's referring to, turning into the kink, a flat out, almost blind, 270 k an hour corner, bumping mirrors. And then Whammo right in front of Aaron Love, who's been the walking highlights reel in Carrera Cup racing this weekend. In fact, both of these drivers have appeared in almost all of the race replays we've seen so far. Max, if you've never met him, he's about six foot four and built like a centre half back. Like he is a built kid. So outrageously talented racing car driver. Yeah, I wouldn't want to push him off a racetrack at 280 k's. No, no. That way. and they were teammates at Sonic Motor Racing for a time. Well, Max has jumped across to TechWorks. He's on board with Craig Lowndes. So he was one of, I think, about half a dozen oh, cars. This at full speed. Man. That came oh. ripping down the hill, didn't it? The images from down at the chase have been so spectacular. It's already lost that little rubber splitter by that point. Incredible that it was able to go all the way through there without any more damage. So much so, Max is able to hop back in that car and complete the race, pick up some points. I mean, he's not really in championship contention anyway this year. Next year will be when he does the full campaign with TechWorks. It's a miles thing, getting laps at Mount Panorama. Anytime you can get on the racetrack, it's important at, at this venue more so than any other. There is one of those splitters. We, we talk a lot about that little plastic rubber strip that clips onto the bottom of the front uh, air dam on these cars, and it does generate legitimate downforce. It stops the cars from understeering like they do. And... We've torn through quite a few of them this year. I think Tail and Ben was an all-time record for the category. <laughs> it was in the 50s. 
that weekend in the Porsche spare parts truck, headed up by Paul Gert, uh, it ran out. So uh, they are a disposable item and they are designed to fall off the car when you do run it off the road and uh, rather to save damage from the front bar on those cars and the radiators will sit behind them. We are understanding restart this time by, which is great. So Harry Jones will be able to have another great moment at Mount Panorama where he leads up the hill. We've got uh, our good buddy from the Big Bash himself to uh, keep an eye on things this weekend. Brad Hodge has been enjoying the coverage. And it's a big Porsche fan. Looking forward to a big mm. summer of cricket to uh, go right off the back of what has been an amazing few weeks of motor racing with Sydney and now through to where we are here at Bathurst this weekend. All right, let's get this restart going once again. They're queuing up behind Harry Jones, and this will be a really nerve-wracking moment. He's already ticked that first box, getting that car off the grid from the front row and winning that race down to turn one. Now he needs to do it again. And the first two sectors here, oh, sorry, really the first two corners, corners. run up to Griffins. A lot of slipstreaming games can be played there if you don't nail that restart. Huge moment yesterday when Cameron Hill and David Wall went for it going up the hill. Cameron Hill with two wheels in the grass kept it absolutely pinned. I spoke to him afterwards. He said, there was no way I was backing out of that. I wanted that position just as much as Wally did. Green flags fly. Good restart. Harry Jones, he's got a car length now on David Wall, the winner yesterday. So that's a good start for the Helimont's driver. Away we go. How does this play out? 11 laps left in the first race in the penultimate round of the Porsche Painted Ixit Carrera Cup Australia. Hasn't quite got away from the chasing David Wall just yet. He's pretty close up Mountain Straight. Not going to be close enough for a late move at turn two. Or is he? He has a little peek at the back. The fight for third and fourth is on. Cameron Hill on the defensive there from David Russell. He's been inside the top few spots here fighting for podiums at Bathurst before in Carrera Cup. I've seen David Wall make that move before. Get the nose out and try and force the driver in front into a mistake to think that you're coming up the inside and you automatically think, oh, I'll open the steering and you run wide and Wally cruises through. He's such an experienced campaigner in this category. He's got so many miles. He's in his 65th Carrera Cup round. He's a 2017 champion. He knows how to drive these cars as well, if not better than everybody else. He's one guy I would not want to have in my mirrors, especially in your rookie season when you're trying to win your first Carrera Cup race, especially at this place. If he can hold his nerve here today, that'll be a great sign that he is a driver to watch out for in the future, especially this guy as well. Cooper Murray is putting now the pressure on the back of David Wall. Some new stickers have appeared on the side of the Cooper Murray car for today as well. If you haven't seen it so far, young Cooper, He's a really talented Victorian driver. He's been overseas in the Porsche Michelin shootout. Right now, he's not worried about that. He's just got the rear wing of the wall racing Porsche. Do we get another move at the chase, or does he bide his time and wait for the braking zone uphill? It was so close. And we've got a freight train of six cars battling for the race lead. This is the Carrera Cup we know and love. He's got a really nice exit out of the chase as well, but can't quite make the move stick down the hill. Aaron Love fighting with David Russell. Russell's entry compromised. Does that give Aaron Love a potential chance to get some overlap onto the straight? Not quite. Now Harry's going semi-defensive down here at turn one. And the more he does that, the more they're going to queue up behind him. David Wall can smell blood here. And he's all over the back of car 12. McElroy first and third. Wall racing, tucked in the middle. Have a look how tight this is. 200 k's plus. Just about grabbing sixth gear over the hill. Wall with the fake. Jinx left, moves to the right. Here comes Aaron Love. And that's exactly what you mentioned last lap. He pulled off the David Wall move. You called it a lap early, Crowley. <laughs> Show the nose, spook the driver into running it wide. It's exactly what happened there. Nice move, Aaron Love. This is like getting it early. That's a great move, Aaron Love. He's so fast, so naturally talented. Sometimes it goes a little bit too far, and we saw earlier in the weekend him whack the fence right there, and it cost him a really, really good result. But man, he's good to watch, and moves like that explain why he's a young star of the future in one mate Porsche racing. Good racing, Harry Jones at the front, oh. dropping wheels off. The point I was going to make about Cooper Murray 
he's still battle hard and he's been overseas racing in the junior program there uh, contested around in Porsche Carrera Cup France so he's got miles in the 992 car that will be raced here next year and I think that might be a little bit of an advantage for McElroy Racing when Harry Jones returns next season to contest the championship they'll just pick the knowledge that they can out of young Cooper who's got some early miles in the new car that will fill the field 30 cars on the grid next year in Porsche Painted Dixon Carrera Cup this is going to be on at the chase. This is absolutely going to be on down here. But they're all playing the slipstream game. It's Moto3 in Porsches. And watch out at the bottom of the hill. They fan out. Wally has a look. Has to abort that one. And that leaves him vulnerable to an attack here from behind. Here comes Cooper Murray. He's brought Cam Hill into the fight. More and more cars joining this battle. And slightly a chance to breathe here for Harry Jones down the bottom of the hill. Awesome racing. Hard and clean between them all. Murray with a couple of wheels off. And the exit of the final corner won't cost him too much. Getting the exit right out of here is crucial. And David Wall's been so good at that this weekend, both in an attacking position like he's in now and when he's defending, as he's had to do all weekend long. Knocks up his 13th career victory with a race two win in round four, which concluded yesterday. In the last five years, he's never finished outside the top three in the championship. And guess where he moved into the championship after that round win yesterday? He's second now. He bumped the McElroy boys back a couple of spots. Again, ahead of Cam Hill here, keeping that pressure on. One slip up from car triple one, and David Wall is back in this championship. It's a comfortable lead at the moment. There's about 6.2 k's of concrete around this joint that'll catch anyone out. We saw that yesterday, that race called short for an incident at Reed Park. Both those drivers unfortunately not back today. Simon Fallon was taken to hospital for precautionary reasons on that occasion. Yep, he's OK. Wow, big moment. Harry Jones with some oversteer at McPhillamy Park. Simon is OK. He was complaining of some neck soreness after that impact, uh, impact which you would understand uh, that car badly damaged and won't return. The same can be said for Nick McBride, who's also fine. But the Porsche Centre Melbourne entry too badly damaged to race again, which is a, a massive shame for the speedy Victorian. He'll now turn his attention to becoming a dad early in the new year. And his lovely wife, Rachel, expecting in mid-January. They're juggling baby and new Carrera Cup car programs early in the new season. That's a happy new year right there. Oh. We go again over the crests. Oh. Now towards the chase. Murray is lurking. Tuned up those McElroy racing cars, Chad. They weren't massively thrilled with their one lap speeding qualifying. They were there or thereabouts, but just lacking a little bit in the early races the previous round. Clearly fast enough to do the job now. Just a matter of making that move, and Cooper Murray will follow his teammate. How's the freight train? Jones, Wall, Murray, Hill next. The championship leader by a big margin. Cannot afford to DNF. Crucial that he gets points in every race. Then it's Aaron Love. Then it's David Russell. Then it's the young Kiwi, Matt Payne. And you go back a couple more spots from the very last position on the grid, you find car 338. C. Lowndes has worked his way up to 10th place, Greg Rust. Crowsley, I've just wandered up to Sonic Motor Racing and had a word to Michael Ritter, who is on the radio to Aaron Love. And I was trying to get balance for you after that interview with Max Vidot before. And I, I described what Max had said. Michael looked at me and basically said, so what did he do? He passed him. And there ended the story. Three sides to every story. <laughs> got two of them. We'll see what race control have to add for the third side a little bit later on. Thank you, Rusty. Cool to be able to add the other side to what happened down there at the chase as we go back over the top. Harry Jones still leading. Bit of expression from the rear of these cars. He called the top seven all the way back down to Matt Payne. Just two and a half seconds from first to seventh. Cracking cup race this one. Two drivers I missed in jumping to straight to Craig Lowndes, which is very rude of me with two amazing rookie drivers doing great jobs in this race. Callum Hedge, the young Kiwi who's in his third ever Carrera Cup race is running eighth. And Jackson Walls, another driver who's never been here, is running ninth in the objective car, another McElroy runner. And Christian Pancioni, we talked about him at the start, he's climbed to 11. There's been some very, very impressive performances in this race. Further back, Sam Shahin in car 13 leading the Pro-Am cars at the moment. And there's Max Vidal off the lead lap but trying to get his way back up through the pack as well. This is Porsche racing at its best. Unmissable stuff at the mountain and the top five cars putting on a show.
feeling here that this is building to something. We've seen it with the longer races before. Goes hard early. Power play, if you will. <laughs> Push the singles for a while, and then right at the end, it's time to swing for the fences again. Tire life will be a factor at the end as well, making sure you've got some Michelin rubber underneath you for that sprint to the finish that will come. Cameron Hill strikes me as a guy who can hit some big sixes late in a motor race, but he's got the bigger test match to worry about from a championship point of view. I've run out of cricket analogies after that. I'm done. That was 10 miles. Well, Mark Sini has a spin at the chase. Battle for Morris Finance Pro-Am. Actually, was running 17. Quite high up the field as Wall has another look. He's done that three laps in a row now. It was the move that Aaron Love successfully pulled off. Can David Wall make it work for him? He's tried three times. I wonder if he next time tries the wider approach the entry to turn two and make Harry Jones in the Helimods car try and defend his line. He's tried one approach a couple of laps. It hasn't worked. He's got seven laps to try another. much to add to that really is there <laughs> <laughs> read my mind mate read my mind that was just cool watching listening it's like a fast-paced expensive go-kart race this one <laughs> front back just on it oh man that was close Cooper Murray back of that car sliding down through the dipper wall on the defensive now worried about the rear tyres on Harry Jones's car because it's sliding around a lot. It's been a couple of little moments out of Reed Park a lap ago. It was sideways and then again coming out of the dipper. Could be careful not to overheat the rear tyres and use them up too much early in the race because when you need to defend, you need to put 465 horsepower to the ground. Oh, Cooper Murray. He had a brief thought about it, decided not to and that he should wait just a few more corners. This is cool. This is very good stuff. Right up behind David Wall again. It wasn't quite enough to give Harry Jones some respite that time by. He'll be just hoping that those two can spend a couple of laps warring with each other to give him a break in the lead. Murray so desperately wants to take second away. And the times are still tumbling all the way back down to David Russell, who just did the quickest lap of the race back in sixth. Meanwhile, let's uh, see if we can unlock what happened at the chase. Mark Sini, Porsche Centre Melbourne leading Tim Miles. Oh, that was strange. So he was just defending his Ooh. line in the middle of the road, a really awkward place to turn in. And just lost the rear going in there, turning in very, very shallow into the corner. This is an eight-car battle pack almost. Jackson Walls is going to get to the back of this group fairly soon. He's not far off the back of Matt Payne. Jones, Wall, Murray, Hill, Love, Russell. David Russell's been quietly impressive in the Daco entry. Yeah, that'll do Jackson Wall's confidence well to good as well, being able to run with these guys. Run with that lead pack. Cooper Murray just said his personal best. First sector of the race, 52.0 to that first sector timer. Yeah, it's the fastest car on the track. He's got plenty of speed to burn, but he's bottled up behind David Wall, and when you're in identical race cars, it doesn't matter if yours is half a tenth faster, it's still very, very difficult to pass. And then when the guy in front of you started more than 120 of these races, it's even more difficult. And that's the case with the driver of car 38. Jones still leads. Officially the margin three tenths. It's more like a Porsche length and a half. Lap 10 of 15. No change in the lead pack, but the pressure is still there. Harry Jones trying to get away. As the fight for second kicks off again. Chasing each other down Conrod. David Wall is so good under brakes down at the chase that there's nothing Cooper Murray can do with that advantage he has in a straight line. Five kilometres are now quicker through the trap. 283 versus 278. David Wall's skill on the brake pads down there at uh, chase is just too good. You only get that advantage so late Ooh. on Conrod though. David Russell wide. Yeah. And loses a spot to Matt Payne. So the young Kiwi in the SP Tools car from Alabama Motorsport jumps up a spot. He's sick. Can he buy himself into this fight? There's still five laps to go. You'd imagine he'll get to the back of Aaron Love in that bright orange Sonic Motor Racing entry. Cameron Hill's just doing his own thing. He's not overly concerned about this battle in front. He'll be more than happy to pick up the pieces if something goes awry. 
He's such a smart racing car driver, Cameron. Races very, very intelligently, and I wonder if a lot of that's down to both his upbringing, but the fact that he's a business owner and runs the race team, and he's got a junior program in Formula Ford and Toyota 86s. Oh, oh Aaron Love in the background as well. Those two cars having moments, and Aaron Love is desperately trying to keep pace with this lead pack. He had the fastest car, I reckon, for the, especially the opening race yep. of the weekend. I say weekend, it was a Thursday. Yeah, it's just been a very long race meeting, this one. A good six days of Bathurst. Fans have been loving it. The drivers loving it too. Plenty of laps at Mount Panorama. Personal best sectors for Harry Jones, David Wall, Cameron Hill. Man, the pace getting quicker and quicker. I was concerned about tyre life perhaps on the Helimont car that's leading this race, but he's currently on the fastest lap. In fact, the top three cars have all set personal best sectors across the top of Mount Panorama. So this pace is intensifying as the race goes on. And now that Matt Payne's got around Dave Russell, I'm really looking forward to Payne versus Aaron Love. I reckon that'll be a good fight between those two. A oh. couple of young guys with big dreams, and they're not afraid to race each other hard. So hopefully that's going to happen. But there's about a second between those two cars. Talking about the orange one and the black one behind it. They're currently sitting in fifth and sixth. That'll be a good battle into itself. But this fight at the front. Harry Jones holding his nerve and potentially about to set the fastest lap of the race. Be pretty close in terms of lap times here. <laughs> pretty close, three hundredths of a second, and it's David Wall who pinches the quickest lap of the race from him. And, and that by yeah, three hundredths as you said, which would have been the toe down Conrod, perhaps fractionally quicker in that lap. Awesome stuff. Great pressure cooker motor race, as is the case in Porsche Carrera Cup. We're talking up this drive from Harry Jones in the race lead, but he is the Sprint Challenge champion. He won the feeder category into Carrera Cup. He did it with a year of consistency in four of the five rounds. He never finished off the podium in a race. Top three, every single race. He accumulated Jim and Steve Richards style and strung it all together. And then in the final round, just went and won some races. So he's a very fast, very smart thinking driver. He's got a university degree, works very, very hard, full time outside of motor racing fit like all these young racing car drivers. He's got the full lifestyle going, but he backs it up, and he's a nice kit to boot as well. He's got it all going for him. He's finished second on three occasions in Carrera Cup races this year. He was second at the Bend Motorsport Park, which is where he got his first pole position of the season as well. And it's just been a matter of stringing it all together. Grabbed the pole position in qualifying for this round, converted the start, three and a half laps to hold out the 2017 champion, the only former Carrera Cup champion in the field. And they're starting to break away as well. Although Cooper Murray, he really did dig deep across the top, then a 34 flat that time by across the top to try and stick with David Wall. And yes, love be paying, that is brewing. You're so that's, excited. That's going to be on. It's great. Two feisty, fiery young guys trying to make their mark in one mate Porsche racing. Matt Payne with more going on in his well with the Super 2 Series. We were talking off air before the race about the logistics of what goes on between this and that Super 2 race we've been talking up because it's going to be a pretty quick turnaround. And Love is struggling. That last lap, a 2.087, his best at 2.079. So he's eight tenths off his best, where Payne is just one tenth off his best. So I think tyre life is starting to affect car 78. And that will be a scrap. Lowndes has picked off both Jackson Walls and Callum Hedge to get himself up to eighth. And this is one of those passes on young Jackson. His dad, Tony, has raced in Carrera Cup. He's raced in Australian GT. Back his 12-hour starts to his credit as well. And this is Jackson's first visit to this part of the world in a racing capacity. He raced over mills in Formula 4 as well. Yeah, and how cool for him, running around with Craig Lowndes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Longer race. All right, let's just put you in the driver's seat. Enjoy the Porsches across the top here at the mountain.
allows the rev limiter action going through the kink. So all his car maxed out then, 280 k's approaching the kink. And that's quite telling because if it's out of breath at that point, it's going to be really hard for him to kind of make that move. Harry Jones' car very quick in a straight line despite the fact that he's got Wall's car tucked up behind him getting the free kick of the slipstream. He got off the elbow very, very well. Corner exit was good. It's a little bit wider than David Wall. I wonder if that just helps that first half of the straight, which is so important to try and keep the gap to the car behind. This is where Wally's been the strongest of anybody across the course of the weekend. And that Payne and Dave Russell. So Payne made a mistake on that last lap, was half a second slower through the middle sector. Which might just be enough to give Aaron Love that spot for the race. So get back eyes down and try and close up that gap. Cameron Hills just set his fastest lap as well. A couple in the field doing that. Christian Pancioni down at 11. Quickest last time by. Good sectors for Callum Hedge in front of him. Leaders still locked together across the top to re-park. Metal break. An area that's sometimes known as Frog Hollow. Yeah. And you might think I'm making this up, Chad, but I walked the track last Sunday and I heard frogs there. <laughs> that sound hollow? They did not. Okay. Very solid frogs in that part of the world. Great bit of racetrack. Amazing in a cup car, I'm told. Amazing in anything. Oh, oh. Mark Sini's off and that is down at the chase. Hopefully, we're going to be free to continue here, despite the fact that might just be a local yellow. What it will mean is potentially any passing manoeuvres down there will be out the window. Coming in hot, couldn't quite get it stopped. Torch the inside front, Michelin. Now, they'll, yeah, double wave yellows, you'd like to think they'll still get the final lap in. Race control will be monitoring that. Such a fast approach. So double wave yellow is now, and they clear that area. Now, this means if David Wall wants to win this race, turn two might just be his best bet. He's looked pretty strong there, but he's nowhere near close. Now he's pulling into the pits with a lap to go. Out of nowhere. And this could be championship just about done and in the hands of Cameron Hill. Is it a tyre? Car sounds all right. We were riding on board across the top of Mount Panorama. What a shame. He will be on the grid for the great race once again. Had retired from supercars racing. And we'll be sharing Jack Smith's car at Brad Jones racing come tomorrow. And we will be free to race here. What a shame for David Wall. He just now turns to the battle between Cooper Murray and Cameron Hill. And I just can't see Hill Young Cam Barron being overly aggressive, trying to work his way past his young Michelin junior rival in front. And they're looking at the left rear. A replacement. He needs to get out to finish this race to get some championship points, but it'll be a huge haul the way of both the driver in front and then this guy in car 36, who are fighting with David Ball for second, third and fourth in the championship with Cameron Hill so far out in front. And Wally had jumped them both coming into this race. But there'll be another swing back the other way after this one with these two drivers now a long way in front. What a shame. And that means, of course, that tomorrow you'll have to do it from the back of the grid. And it's not 15 laps tomorrow. Got plenty of speed at Wall Racing. He'll have to pass some cars. He'll look to Craig Lowndes, who's now seventh as some inspiration. But what a drive from this young guy. From Queensland, from the Sunshine Coast. He's a super young star of our sport, a Michelin Junior in Porsche racing, a Sprint Challenge champion, Chad, and about to win his first ever Carrera Cup race. And what a place to do it. What must have gone through his head when he saw David Wall pull off to the left on that last lap. And that is why the tyre was cut down but Harry Jones take nothing away from this amazing effort, holds his nerve and sees the chequered flag first for the first time in Carrera Cup. And what a place to do it. Mount Panorama and the Helimods team and McElroy Racing get a win here at the mountain. McElroy back on top. And my word, that was some serious fire that he had to put up with coming from behind. David Wall threw everything at him. Warren Luff's impressed. And the team down there can all nod in approval. Andy McElroy with his back to us be proud of Harry Jones and the job that he just showed us. Getting the job done and a McElroy 1-2 with Cooper Murray promoted up to second. 
Cameron Hill looking very strong, if not already done enough to win that championship. Aaron Love, he was aggressive. Matt Payne inside the top five. And Christian Pancione, great try from the back to round out the top ten. Wow, lots to talk about. Jeff Emery, second in Morris Finance Pro-Am. Sam Shaheen gets another win. And that championship battle is evolving as well with a round and a bit to go, with Shaheen closing on Emery in the standings. Ben Stack next. So David Wall classified 14th at the end there. Tim Miles next. Dan Cook, Scott Taylor Hall and Paddy Achi. But well done, Harry Jones. Three times he'd been second coming into this race, but finally breaks through. The Helimods Porsche Chad is a winner in Porsche Painter Dixon Carrera Cup.